We were so relieved to see the boat be loaded into the shipping container bound for Aori Island right on the deadline. Knowing that it will be on the beach waiting for us for when we arrive in July to finish it off is extremely satisfying. Right, we have just got through customs. We're all fed, ready to jump on the flight to Vanuatu. This has been three years in the making. We can't actually believe that we are here. But flying out in an hour or so, um, we know we've got a pretty lengthy stay in Port Villa before we fly out again to Santo tomorrow morning. <laughs> tomorrow morning. So we have really loaded up on food, uh, but excited, excited to fly out, excited to get to Vanuatu and actually get this boat underway. So we didn't end up booking a room uh, as we flew in into Port Villa this evening because we thought we might be able to stay at the airport. Uh, there's a, that was a very rookie error, okay? So I'm glad we were able to get a taxi into, into Port Villa. We've tried a few places. Not really coming up, but we... Yeah, that's it. We found a motel uh, that we're, that, that's that been able to take us on, like, thankfully. I think it's cost us a bit of an arm and a leg, though, to, to, to pay for the taxi. I think they're taking us for a bit of a ride. But that's all right. You live, you learn. We should have known this. We should have known that we would have gap. And I'm a little bit worried we're going to uh, fall short of our, our being able to get back to the airport in the morning. But no, we'll, be fine. we'll be fine. We will. Just had a gnarly ride in the back of the ute to get to San Michel Landing, and this place is majestic. It's just a beach, a couple of shipping containers on it. This is where Dave and the guys will be actually picking us up from to take us back to the school. I think Reese and I, Reese is mad keen for a swim, mate. Look at this. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting ready now. Getting ready now. Look at the bloody water. It's just unbelievable how clear it is. But I think we're going to get a cheeky swim here because we've got about an hour or so to wait before they are uh, before the boat gets here. When the boat finally arrived at the San Michel Wharf, it was awesome to see our good mate Dave Richardson on board. Donating his time and his expertise in helping us fit up the boat and do some work around the school grounds was great.
Okay, so we've arrived uh, yesterday and we've got ourselves acquainted with the school and where we're sleeping and cooking and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and now it's game on. We wanna try and get quite a bit done today on this boat. So with uh, everything that we'll be doing, we'll be, uh, we need to re-sand a couple of areas and tape up a lot of this uh, inner deck area as well so that we can flow coat the whole boat, exterior and, uh, and interior, so that everything is sealed. We wanna try and do some sand on the, uh, a bit of a non-skin on the floor as well, and also bolt the pod up if possible today. So that, that'll then give us a fully blank slate to be able to start bolting all the mechanical componentry on with the motors and all the drivetrain and everything. Um, but we've got a lot to do today and we're pretty excited to get stuck into it. Um, and uh, yeah, it, hopefully this rain holds out. afternoon swim, Reese and I, and we are feeling super refreshed and stoked to be here. Um, and I think we've got, we've, we've seen a couple of wrecks, a couple of boat wrecks up on the, up on the side of the, uh, up a little bit further that I think we're going to start to look at exploring, uh, now.
<laughs> See you. All right, afternoon, day three. It's been quite a successful day today. Dad had to go back into Santo, um, catch a ride on a boat to get back into Santo to get a couple of parts that we're missing or try and get a couple of parts that we're missing. But apart from that, I feel like we're actually pulling pretty strong to be able to make it, uh, at least start testing the motors and make sure everything works tomorrow. We've had to jerry-rig so many different things, which has been pretty pretty wild to try and nut our head around, yeah. to get our head around everything. But um, a bit of a challenge. Yeah, but uh, we've moved uh, out from under the principal's house, which we've been staying the last couple of nights. All the boys left this afternoon uh, to catch their flight back to Port Villa, and we're here for another two days to make sure it all works. We'll touch base again tomorrow to make sure that we're on track and uh, give you guys an update where we are uh, when it went in with the boat and hopefully we will have it all sorted and in the water and running. Day four. Woo. Walking back down to the water to get stuck back into the boat. We are pretty confident uh, that, we're gonna, that we're going to get it done today, ready for testing tomorrow morning, because we actually uh, we actually leave tomorrow afternoon. So yeah, we've got a few things left to sort of tidy up and get ready mechanically, but it's all looking pretty good. It's looking good, absolutely. So I'm, we're keen for the testing uh, tomorrow. We're keen to see it on the water and actually hopefully it's working, right? Yeah. <laughs> be good to test it out. Absolutely. There she is. <laughs> All right, morning on day five. We are heading down to the boat now to start pushing it into the water and begin testing, our water testing. It is super exciting, the fact that we actually got it to this point. We were a little bit nervous, thinking that we weren't gonna get there, but we abs we did, and, uh, and now we're uh, about to start pushing it in and get it tested. And hopefully everything works out. push to get the boat into the water was harder than we thought. Being low tide, we knew we needed to get anyone we could to help roll it down the beach and into the sea. As we were working it down the bank, it started to rain and it definitely felt like a christening of the boat. With a final huge push, we got the boat into the water and it's ready for testing. Pulling it round to the dock and fueling it up to make sure the motors would start.
as we were driving out into the deeper water, we clipped the inner reef and bent the shaft on the motor. Our hearts still sink thinking about it. Limping back home with one motor, the boys from the village searched through the workshop and found a spare shaft and propeller. Changing it out on the beach and we were operational again. So glad there were spare parts to fix the motor. Seeing the boat floating in the water with motors on and issues fixed was one of the most rewarding experiences for us. Three years in the making and it was finally finished. We still have a few little tweaks to do to get it to run smoothly. However, knowing that the school can start using it immediately is a great feeling. Yeah.